The Serial Peripheral Interface Bus, or SPI bus, is a three to four wire synchronous serial communication bus used by processors and peripherals. Devices communicating via SPI are in a main sub relationship, previously called a master slave relationship. The main device is the controlling device, and it drives the clock. The subordinate device accepts instructions and can be a display, sensor, or other peripheral device. One main device can control one or more subordinate devices. Additionally, SPI is a full duplex bus and can transmit any number of bits without interruption. For this video, I'll be using the 4 Series B MSO, but the setup and operation for SPI is identical on several series of Tektronix oscilloscopes, all of which can be equipped with SPI bus decoding and triggering. On channel 1, I have the clock signal. Channel 2 is connected to the MOSI, or main output sub-input. This line is for the main to send data to the sub. Channel 3 is connected to SS, or sub-select. This is used by the main to select the sub it wants to send data to. I could manually decode the data bus values by deciding whether the data signal is high or low on each of the rising edges of the clock signal, but this method is very time consuming. Instead, I will have the scope do the heavy lifting by adding a SPI bus to decode the signal. I can do this by adding a new bus. Select SPI as the bus type. The scope can be configured to decode 2-wire, 3-wire, or 4-wire SPI buses. For 2-wire, select idle for framing and notice how the line for the subselect is removed. For 3-wire, select the subselect signal for framing. This will bring back the SS input necessary for three-wire bus decode. In this demo, I'll decode a three-wire bus and configure the bus accordingly. I'll set the S clock signal to channel one and set the clock threshold to two volts with the polarity set to a rising edge. I'll assign the SS signal to channel three and set its threshold to two volts with the polarity set to active low. The MOSI signal is set to channel two and its threshold is two volts. The polarity is active high. Word size is already set correctly at eight bits. For bit order, I'll stick with the most significant bit first. Finally, I'll set the decode format to hex. Now that I've configured the SPI bus, I could take a look at the decoded bus. On the display, I could see the MOSI data packets and the cyan colored boxes. The green start of packet indicator corresponds to the falling edge of the subselect. The red end of packet indicator corresponds to the rising edge of the subselect signal. I can also leverage the results table to analyze the decoded signal. In the upper left corner of the results table, I can see that this is the results table for bus 1. If there are multiple rows in the table with different start times, I can tap one of the rows and the zoom box will be repositioned to correspond to the selected row. To close out of the results table, tap the X in the upper right corner. Now I'll configure the 4 series MSO to trigger on key events like SS active or specific data values. I'll open the trigger menu and change the trigger type to bus. I'll verify the source is set to bus 1. By default, the trigger is set to SS active to align with the polarity we selected in the bus 1 setting. Now let's acquire a single waveform to see if the trigger worked as expected. We can see that the trigger point indicated by the T icon is aligned with the falling edge of the SS signal as expected. Once I have acquired a serial signal, it can be helpful to find all occurrences of a certain event. I can do this with the search function. First, I'll tap the search to add a new search and set the search type to bus. The search source is set to bus one. I can have the search function applied to our MOSI signal or our MISO signal. In this case, I'll stick with MOSI. By default, mark on is set to SS active. I'll change this to data. Then under hex, enter 1F. The binary value updates automatically. I can see the data packet with 1F marked by the search function. The search function on the right side of the screen also indicated how many such events have been found. Many embedded system designs rely on SPI bus for communications between controllers and peripheral chips. 
Automated spy bus decoding and triggering can save you a lot of time by showing that the right data is getting to the right place at the right time.